Hi, this is Ivan, and this is the second half of um, the fourth installment. That sounds kind of complicated. Uh, what is freedom? That was that's what we're talking about. That's it's lesson four, but it's a, this lesson four has like two parts. But we're talking about what is freedom. In the last uh, segment, we talked about um, freedom. The definition of, of freedom is is it, it pertains to your spiritual position and your identity. Freedom is not something that that you, you should you should be chasing after. It's not something that you can have and not have, lose. You know, in that sense, freedom is something that you are. Freedom is part of your identity in Christ. You know, and we looked at a bunch of scriptures that said, you know, fornicators, idolaters, such as some of ye were. We looked at scriptures that talked about how we're seated in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. We looked at scriptures like 2 Corinthians 5.17 that says, um, if any man he be in Christ, he is a new creature. Identity. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. The, the trick of the devil would be getting you to not understand, to not have a good definition of freedom and to chase your tail trying to find one for the rest of your life. You know, it's, um, it's you know, um, like, it's, it's really the same thing that um, that he did with Adam and Eve. You know, he, um, he tricked them out of their identity. And because they didn't know their identity or fully understand it, he was able to gain, um, he was able to gain advantage over them. He told them, um, God's trying to keep something from you. If you eat this fruit, you shall be like God. Well, they were already like God. They were made in God's likeness and his image. They were already free people. You know, they already knew everything that God, you know, needed them to know. Um, they already had authority over him. He used the fact that they didn't understand their identity to gain advantage over him. He tried to do the same thing with Jesus. He said, if thou be the son of God, identity, you know, make these stones bread. If you be the son of God, cast yourself down from this temple. You know, and if he had succeeded in, you know, obviously he didn't. If he had succeeded in, in, in getting Jesus to fall in one of those temptations, he would have tricked him out of his identity. He was already the son of God. And, and by sinning, he would have defeated him in his purpose on the in the earth, which was to be sinless and to be our savior and to reconcile, you know, all of us. Um, praise be to God that he didn't, he didn't make that happen. But what about you? You know, if he can trick you into thinking that you're not free because of, um, you know what you're feeling in your body or you know and let's let's look at that you know let's let's take a look at a, a couple of scriptures one of the scriptures i'm going to go to is second corinthians 4 18. so we fix our eyes not on what is so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen for what is seen is temporary what is unseen is eternal so we don't want to fix our eyes on things in the natural realm things we can smell touch taste see our memories our emotions because the enemy has power in that realm he wants you to focus on how you've been feeling i still feel the same way i still have the same emotions i still have the same desires the same cravings i'm still having thoughts and memories or he you know he he wants to make your um your thoughts your feelings the, the, what you did in the past bigger than the truth of your spiritual position if he can get you to take your eyes off your identity he can gain mastery over you because greater is he that liveth in us than he that's in the world because we have Christ on the inside of us, our identity, our position, we're above him. But if he can make us think that we're not, that we don't have freedom, or that we're not free, that free is something, freedom is something that needs to be chased after, then he can take authority over us. And he can lead us here and there because we don't know that we're already free. You know, um, your, your spiritual position is secure, but your identity can be forgotten. That's that whole piece that we're saying he did to Adam and Eve. He tricked them out of knowing who they really were. You know, and he tried to do the same thing with Jesus. He attacked his identity. If thou be the son of God, do this. If you're really free, you know, you should do this. If you were really free, you wouldn't feel this way. If you were really free, you know, you wouldn't have these thoughts. If you were really, how could you be free with all that you did? You know, that's the lie of the devil. It is the lie from the pit of hell. You know, your spirit man is already free. What you're learning how to do is to take the freedom that's already been purchased for you and manifested in your thought life, in your emotions, in your body. And we'll talk about freedom in your spirit, in your soul, in your body in the next lesson. But let's look at, um, well, Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs uh, 23, 7. Let's take a look at that. That's so I can catch up myself. Proverbs 23, 7 is a very familiar scripture, and I can't find it out here, but I know what it is. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If the devil can get you in your heart to think that you're not free then you won't be 
even though the scripture says it's yours, even though the scripture says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, even though the scripture says I can put off the old man and put on the new man and be renewed, you know, you'll never experience it because he's deceived you into thinking you're not free. Because, probably because of something that you can see, I looked at this person and I felt this way, or I fell last night, or, you know, whatever. You know, he's, um, and granted, we're talking about our bodies, you know, I am a spirit. I live in my body. I possess my soul. I am a spirit. I live in this body. You know, and I, the analogy I use is, if you ever saw the movie Dave, or Eddie Murphy was this um, little man, you know, um, this, I got a little man right here. There's a little man. I don't know if you can see him. Let's just say this little man was inside of me, driving the big me, you know. Um, I am a spirit. I live inside this body. And, and, and God's uh, design was that my spirit, man, would dominate me my big ears would dominate this body you know that i would tell it you know uh, when it could eat when it could sleep when it could have sex so on and so forth jesus did that in the wilderness he, he went on a fast and you know when he was tempted with the bread he said no you ain't eating right now it's not the time to eat you know we ain't gonna sin against god about you know by making this stone bread he had dominion over his body and its desires he never sinned sexually we know that uh in the same way you know, um, that's that's the way we're supposed to live, you know, and that's a whole different story, you know, but my, my spirit man is free. You know, it can get entangled if I let, let this body drive itself, you know, it will drive me back into entanglements and back into sin, you know, the scripture talks about casting down imaginations, we'll get into that piece um, in the next lesson, freedom in your spirit, soul, and body. Um, but let's look at, um, again, the idea was, you know, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I think in my heart, that's that's who I am. He's got to work on, if he can confuse your definition of freedom, if he can get your definition of freedom to be, well, you know, your mannerisms. Until I get rid of these mannerisms, I'm not free. Uh, until I stop having these thoughts and these attractions, I'm not free. You don't have anything to do with it. You know, it really, it has, a, it has you know, in terms of, because once, once what's, Really, you know, uh, that word have I hit in my heart that I might not sin against you. Once the word gets down on you, you have a revelation of who you are in your spirit, it will begin to manifest in your body. It will begin to manifest in your choices. And, and, and you can use the word of God to subdue your thoughts and bring your thoughts in line. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Let's see if I can find it. I'm on the wrong page. I wonder if I couldn't find it. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. In that scripture, um, we see that, you know, in that particular talk, scripture is talking about blinding the, the, uh, the minds of men uh, who are not saved, you know, to the truth of the gospel. But we see that Satan has the power to, uh, bl to, to, to blind, to blind us to certain truths. He can blind you to the truth that your spirit man is already free. And keep you from asserting the power and the authority of your spirit over your body, over your emotions, over your thought life. If he can keep you blinded in that to that truth, then you then you won't walk free. You know, even though the gate is open, even though the chains have been broken, even though he's been made stripped from all of his authority and and, and, and made a public spectacle by Jesus Christ. Um, Second Peter one nine. Second Peter one nine. Um, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And you have to go back to Second Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 1, all the way up to verse 9 to see what these things are. He that lacketh these things, but he, you know, he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You can forget your identity. You can have spiritual amnesia and the devil is behind that. He wants you to forget that you were purged from your old sins. You know, we looked at all those scriptures in the last uh, segment on such as some of you were. And, you know, I used to do this, but, you know, now I don't do that anymore. Well, he wants you to think just because you did it that you can never be free from it. Yeah, you're still the same person. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And he can make you uh, forget that you were purged from your old sins, that you're not that person anymore. You have put off the old man and you're a new man. Or you can forget yourself if you don't keep reminding yourself in the word. Um, James 1.21 through James 1.25. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, my choice, and superfluity of naughtiness. That's a big high-minded way of, you know, stuff I'm not supposed to be doing. And receive with meekness or humility the engrafted word, the word of God, which is able to save your souls. The word of God can affect my mind, will, and emotion, which, you know, makes up my soul. Um, seek the word of God. Receive it. You know, receive the word of God, which is able to save your souls. Here in verse 22, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 
For if any man, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Man, we can forget who we are. We have the power to, you know, forget that we are new creatures. This last verse 25 says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, or the word of God, and continueth in the word of God, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, of the, you know, of the work of God, of the, of the word of God, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So the whole point here with these things is that um, the Satan has the power uh, to blind. You know, we have the power through forgetfulness or whatever to be deceived out of our own identity. And that whole peace with Jesus, you know, we came back, if thou art the son of God, same thing he did to Adam, uh, Adam and Eve, you know, um, Satan wants to lower our expectations on what freedom is and what, you know, the expectation should be that, man, I'm a new creature in Christ. You know, he wants you to, to, to focus on what you can see in the, in the physical realm, you know, you know what you're feeling. Um, again, freedom is not, you know, something I'm chasing. Freedom is part of my identity. It's, it's part of who I am, you know, in our next segment, we're going to talk about maintaining freedom in our spirit, our soul, and our body. But again, the, you know, 1 Corinthians 9.27 um, says that, Paul says, I um, I keep under my body, or I bring my body under subjection, I beat it in subjection, I put it under, lest that by any means, after I preach to others, I myself might become a castaway. You know, if my spirit is strong, I can assert dominion over my body. I can just... You know, I can I can tell my body what to do. Paul says my 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 body and my spirit are at war with each other. We'll get into that uh, in the next segment. You know, but if I'm not feeding my spirit and I'm only feeding my body, you know, my body is stronger. It's going to determine what you know where we're going to go and what we do. You know, your body wants to be feel feel good. It wants pleasure. Your spirit man wants the things of God and it wants to be righteous and it wants to live holy. You know, but if you're feeding your body BGC and you're feeding your body porn sites and you're feeding your body um, BET and, and some of the songs on the radio today um, um, it's going to build up your spirit your your physical man your lust your, your old nature if you're not you know simultaneously feeding your body your spirit man sorry or you're feeding your spirit man more your spirit man is going to be anemic it's going to be weak um, the old Popeye the sailor man you know Popeye the sailor man for people old enough to know who Popeye was Popeye had to take the spinach you know to get strong you got to take the word of God in heavy doses to overcome the conditioning of your mind. Some of you have been in a lifestyle or doing some things so long and your and the habits are so ingrained that you really have to have a strong spirit to overcome what are almost like natural impulses to certain stimuli. You know, things that, you know, produce a reaction in you, you know, certain bondages. You're going to have to have a strong spirit to pull down strongholds, to cast down imaginations, and everything and exalt itself against the knowledge of God. You have to renew your mind with the word of God. And, and your spirit, man, is going to be the one that forces your body to open that Bible and to sit down and read and, and do those things. I want to close with um, one scripture um, before before we go into this next segment, Freedom Spirit of Your Spirit, Soul, and Body. And that scripture is uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, yeah. 2 Timothy uh, 1.14. 2 Timothy 1.14. It says, Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. All this word, all this teaching, all this stuff that we're getting, you know, the enemy would like nothing more than to steal it from you. Mark the parable of the sower, you know, Mark 4, it says that when we don't understand something, Satan comes immediately to steal the word that was sown. If we don't understand, if you understand what I'm saying, he's going to steal it from you. Even if you do understand, he's, if you read through Mark 4, there's different ways that the enemy comes to steal the word that was sown, to strive through lust of other things, to the cares of this world. He's going to try to steal this word, but I'm asking you to set yourself to guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you today, to guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. One way that you can guard it is to read it, over, listen to it over and over again, look up the scriptures, highlight your Bible. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 talks about how we must give the most more earnest heed or attention to the things we have heard, lest we let them slip. Any of what I've said today, any of what I've said in a previous lesson, anything that you've heard in church, anything you've got that's blessed you from a book or wherever you got it, you can. we have the capability to let it slip or to forget. The whole piece we talked about forgetting it or the enemy can blind it to us. We have to maintain it like an oil change on a car. Renew your mind with the word of God by hearing certain things over and over. Guard this good deposit. Don't let it slip. God bless you. In the next one, we're going to talk about freedom of soul and spirit. Freedom of spirit, soul, and body. God bless. Bye-bye.